I'm a plant biologist. I spent most of my adult life in farms and greenhouses, where I've met many farmers and growers. They are amazing individuals, but most people don't appreciate them as much as they should. You see, there are many misconceptions about farming, especially when it comes to pest management. Farmers spray pesticides on their crops for the same reason oncologists prescribe chemotherapy for their patients who have cancer. The dire circumstances force us to poison our body so we live longer. It forces us to put pesticides on our food so we don't go hungry. We all know the side effects of these treatments, but when you're facing a later stage detrimental affliction, your treatment options become very limited. Now, I'm not here to talk about pesticides, rather the circumstances that force us to use them. Because I believe if we change those circumstances, we can eliminate the need for pesticides in most cases. Most growers are intimately in tune with their crops. After years of growing, they know which plant is just throwing a tantrum and which plant is genuinely stressed. I've met growers who could smell presence of pests on their crops. But the problem is, in large farms and greenhouses, they cannot tend to every single plant. According to the World Bank, in 2016, the average size of a farm and a greenhouse was 459 acres. That's equivalent of 347 American football fields. And not all of these farms are corporate farms. In fact, 97% of farms in America are family-owned. So in these massive farms, when an outbreak happens, things can easily get out of hand. And it forces farmers to spray pesticides to contain and control the damage. Now, you might ask, well, why can't we just go and buy organic food? Right? Problem solved. Despite the fact that only affluent people can afford to buy organic food. According to the US Department of Agriculture, only 4% of the food in the market is organic. The majority of our food comes from conventional farms. Some of our food actually comes from different countries, and they might have different pesticide regulations altogether. But extensive use of pesticides can be avoided if farmers can find the problems at early stage. You see, they have other means of controlling their crop problem. For example, in a greenhouse, if farmers find a small population of pests, they can strategically place biological control agents. These are the good bugs that come and eat the bad bugs. And that's how they can control the pest issue without even a drop of pesticide. The main reason growers use pesticides is because they find the problem too late and they have to react with the strongest weapon in their arsenal, because time is of the essence. So how can we tell plants are about to get sick before the issue gets out of hand? There are many tools in the farms that help farmers find nutrients in the soil, the temperature, available light. But the underlying assumption of all these tools and technologies is that if we keep the conditions optimal, all of our plants are going to be happy. But growers already know that's not necessarily the case. If you have a glass of water in front of you, and I come with a moisture sensor, the best thing I can do is to confirm that you have water within your reach. But I cannot confirm that you've been hydrated. The best way that we can ensure our plants are healthy is to look at their actual estate as opposed to the conditions around them. And how should we do that? It's simple. You should just ask the plant. <laughs> you see, plants are like babies. <laughs> they tell you when they're not happy. Actually, plants are more complicated than babies, because <laughs> you know, when babies are unhappy, they cry. And the reason for unhappiness can be I don't know, dropping the pacifier, having a boo-boo, or a vet diaper. The response, though, is always crying. Plants, on the other hand, are far more sophisticated. Plants can't talk, and they can't walk, but they can communicate with each other and with their surrounding. 
they use infochemicals and defensive signals that they evolved over millions of years of evolution. Their fascinating defensive mechanism enabled them to fend off intruders or even call for help. If you have done any amount of gardening in your life, you must have noticed the ladybugs that come and land on your plants and eat the aphids. Do you think that's random? No, no, no. Plants actively send SOS signals by changing their smell. And this is how the ladybugs find the aphids in your garden, by following these carefully crafted cues set by plants. When plants cry for help, they convey precise information about their estate. They tell you what bug is on them, how many, and where in the plant canopy they're located. The studies have shown that plants can even react to an insect egg before it did hatch. So we have an active communicator here, the plant, and a good listener, the grower. But industrial farming disconnected the two from each other because of its sheer size. What we need is a technology that can bridge the gap and bring them two together. You must have heard about all these advances in agriculture technology, from drones to robots and sensors. But the question is, in what capacity we should learn, we should allow the machines to run our farms? To what extent we should let the machines control our food source? What's the role of the human farmer in this picture? There are two schools of thoughts as how to address this question. On one hand, we have artificial intelligence, known as AI. These are autonomous machines that can reproduce human cognition. They can learn like a human. They can solve problems, find issues on their own. On the other hand, we have intelligence augmentation. These are computer systems that supplement human thinking. AI machines tend to work alone, while IA machines extend human abilities. There are many repetitive tasks on farms that autonomous machines can do greatly without any human intervention, like sorting the fruits. But there are many tasks that human can do much better than the machine. A machine can only come to assist the human, but it still needs the guidance of the human operator. Now, don't get me wrong. We do need intelligent machines on the farms. Feeding a growing population in the world is a massive challenge. We need the machines. But I believe in order to address the challenge of growing fo food in a changing world, we must combine both artificial intelligence and intelligence augmentation in the farm technology. Now, having said that, we must not forget about the central role of the human farmer and the importance of their know-how. Engineers tend to undermine the value of conventional knowledge of farmers, and that's wrong. Expert growers know what's best for their crop. The problem is, the number of expert growers are globally declining. We cannot educate enough farmers to meet the demand for food production. And even if we do, they need years and years of experience before they can get to the mastery level. Growing is a mixture of science and art. The knowledge of food production is a human heritage that deserves protection. We must capture and digitize knowledge of expert growers. It enables them to extend their presence across their field through the machine. It also provides a new source of revenue, because now, in addition to their crop, they can monetize their know-how and provide that for novice growers. Once we reconnect the human grower to the plant, and once we enable them to find the problem at earlier stage, they can grow our food without extensive use of pesticides. We have started with a crude idea, but over the years, me and my team developed a platform that can rapidly and non-invasively measure plant defensive signals and enable us to find the problems before you can even see the symptoms. We targeted greenhouses because you can grow a lot of food in a small footprint. Our platform can capture more than 20,000 data points from every square meter of a greenhouse in less than a second. 
After years and decades of research, we identified special biomarkers in plants that they produce in response to various stress. And these biomarkers are stress-specific. We actively probe the plants and measure the type and the level of these biomarkers. And that's how we can find out what exactly is going on with the plant. We are essentially plant whisperers. <laughs> it goes like this. So I go to a plant, and I say, uh, hey, Mr. Tomato, how are you doing? And he's like, uh, I don't feel good. I think there are a bunch of aphids out there. <laughs> and this conversation, it happens over a span of 50 milliseconds. And I can't trust the plant, because plants never lie about their own health. So our artificial platform learned the changes in the pattern of plant response. And our IA platform captured the knowledge of the growers. Things you cannot capture with a camera or an environmental sensor. Things like, how does sick plant smell? How does it feel when you touch it? Our roots are deep in biology. But using technology, we are building the operating system of connected greenhouses. A robot can cover a large greenhouse in a few days, pinpoint the problems, and place biological control agents where and when they're needed. We can pinpoint crop stress at the earliest stage. Our goal is to build a global center for disease control for plant health by capturing billions of data points from various plants affected by various pests and diseases. And currently, we are expanding our database at the rate of 6 million data points per hour. In addition to that, we are putting together a large collection of alternative treatments that enable all growers all over the world to produce clean food without a drop of pesticide. Because we believe access to clean food is a human right. Today, only affluent people can afford to buy high-quality food. But new technologies, if used properly, can democratize food quality and enable us to grow affordable, accessible, clean food for all. Thank you.